Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Uh, welcome to another uh, weekend edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, update show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Uh, we got the last several weeks left of the dog's day of summer, I guess. Um, again, for all of us, we've been pretty much uh, locked away, right? Like, uh, like people that are uh, sentenced to something for all this corona crap. Um, it's it's almost amazing that summer is gone. And most of the time, you don't even comprehend that summer is actually happening because everything just feels like one big, long uh, Groundhog Day. But the, the, as much as, uh, you know, there's a lot of crap going on this year and just, just incredible events uh, over and over and over again, uh, the one constant continues to be uh, the stock market um, doesn't make a difference, right? We talk about this every week. It's almost like uh, the same song and dance every week. No matter what happens, uh, the market is very, very strong. Uh, again, bulls continue to um, go nuts. You know, they continue to uh, rotate groups. And we'll talk about a very, very uh, important uh, group that was actually affected positively uh, this week and continues to be uh, doing well. But I think the most important part of what we're seeing here is, you know, the ability for the market to sustain without um, without materialistic news, without new materialistic news, which is absolutely great. Negating bad news, uh, continuing to run uh, into uh, the fourth quarter, which continues to be incredibly strong. Uh, we have the elections, obviously, uh, coming up as well. So that's going to be uh, in focal point as well. Uh, but I, I think the, the biggest question was, especially going into this last, going into this, leading up to this last run up in the bulls, uh, was how is retail going to do, right? Now that the focus was shifted away from the predominantly tech aggressive movers, you know, the Amazons of the world, uh, the Teslas of the world, the Netflix, the Apples, so forth and so on. Like, how is retail going to do? Again, we know uh, 40, 50, whatever it is, the amount of uh, people unemployed, 50 million people unemployed. How is going to be the com consumer spending, right? Where is going to be the money uh, flow? We see tons of small and uh, small uh, mom and pop businesses obviously suffering uh, a lot, and I'm sure through any towns, all your towns, uh, you've seen the effects of mainstay brick and mortar small businesses close down, then they'll never reopen again. So the question was, how was the economy going into this? fourth quarter, excuse me, going into this quarter here, third quarter, uh, how is it going to reflect, right? What are the big box makers going to do? What are they going to show? Is their money spending? Is the economy actually sustaining any type of growth or not even growth, sustaining any type of level of flatness with all these people, unfortunately, being unemployed? And we, we got that answer. And if you, if you didn't think there was going to be more fuel uh, to this bull market stampede, now you have materialistic facts. They're telling you that people are spending money. And again, obviously everybody knows about Amazon. And again, we'll talk about the individual pivots in a second, what I really like for this week. But again, the question was, you know, what was going to happen with Target? What was going to happen with Lowe's? What was going to happen with Home Depot and Walmarts of the world? You know, can a big box a uh, retailer that, again, obviously has a huge online presence like Nike with their $250 sneakers, can they function in a society or an economy that 40, 50 million people are either out of jobs or just literally living rent uh, check to check? And we got all that answers. And, and the most amazing part, and as much as the Tesla continues to be the most amazing story and, again, the most hated stock in the history of the stock market, right? Whether you love it or you hate it, uh, again, the scoreboard is a scoreboard. I mean, since, you know, you, you could go back to since last March, the stock was at $300. The stock touched uh, 2100 this week. It's just amazing. As much as this is the story, again, Main Street economy is the most important part. Again, Tesla can go away tomorrow. Facebook can go away tomorrow. If people are not physically buying things, right? Like going to Walmart and buying milk, going to Target uh, and buying groceries, right? If there's actually not money 
being allocated in the necessities of life, that is going to be a much more important focal point than a Tesla, right? As much as I love Tesla, uh, but that is the most important. And we got our answers this week. And if you look at uh, earnings this week, you see the really great reports, right? Home Depot did very, very well. Lowe's uh, did incredibly well. Look at this chart on Lowe's, man. I didn't even know this damn thing even existed to about 15 minutes ago, right? And I started looking at all these, all, all these retails, just absolutely unbelievable, right? It just really, really going nuts. Target had a monster blowout quarter, blowout quarter, okay? You, you know, you could see, uh, understand a move like this in a Netflix and an Amazon, right? But a, a Target is just absolutely f phenomenal. Look at Nike, right? Look at the run Nike has been on and continues uh, to really take out all time highs. And again, it really does show you, no matter what the economic statistics still show, people are still spending money, right? And it, it really does prove, and unfortunately, uh, this is the case, the spread between the affluent and unfortunately the people who don't have money is huge. It's even wider than ever. And the most important part uh, about the stock market, about where we are right now, not only uh, is it continually, uh, continually negating the bad news, the bad statistics, right? and forward growth for the next year, no matter who the president is, now they're actually getting good news uh, with economic spending. And again, the most important part of any economic is money flow, right? As long as there's money flow, especially in the brick and mortar names that obviously have a huge online presence, it is going to be a major focal point going into the fourth quarter. And traditionally, uh, the fourth quarter, no matter what type of environment it is, uh, is very, very strong. Again, it starts off with uh, the Thanksgiving rally, right? The Turkey Day Thanksgiving rally spills off into the Santa Claus rally and then into the January effect. And usually, for the most part, you do have a very, very strong uh, start to the first quarter. So again, the election is definitely going to be a huge part of what happens uh, towards the end of uh, the year. That's obvious. Um, again, no matter if you are a Republican voting for Trump or a Democrat voting for Biden, again, that is your business. But again, at the end of the day, it's all about our ability. It's all about our responsibility to make sure that we're good, okay, no matter who's in office, okay. It, it shouldn't put a situation, shouldn't put you in a situation that your life gets worse or better. If you're an adult, and no matter what business you're in, no matter what line of profession, especially in the trading aspect, uh, it, it should not make a difference who an office is. It's all about your process. It's all about your ability uh, to use common sense, look at the market for what it is, not for what you want it to be, and you know, go forward, right? Go forward like any uh, business or, or intelligent adult. Uh, a monster, you know, a monster moves this week, right? Really, really monster moves. Um, you're not gonna see it, you know, you're not gonna see it on the scoreboard, okay, and that's the most important part. The S and P this week was up, you know, a little less than one percent, seven tenths of a percent. Again, linear move, all time highs. That's great. Uh, if you look at the disconnect this week, and again, I, I always try when when I look at charts on the weekend, people always ask me what do I look for. Even though, like again, I'm I'm probably not going to participate in most names uh, on the IWM uh, on the Dow. Right? I'm not a big uh, Dow guy. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm beta. I like beta in, in special situations uh, that have really, really good aggressive money flow. Um, but I like to know where everything is. Uh, again, I want to be over prepared uh, for the trading day, for the next trading day. Usually, you would say prepare for the trading week. But this, you know, this market, this economy, this uh, whole COVID, you know, universe is so fluid. Okay. It changes on a dime. So you can't even prepare for the week. You have to really, really be prepared for the next day, over prepared for the next day. So I like to, uh, look at order flow. Um, I'd like to look at stocks in the IWN, the diamonds, uh, and the S and P 500, although S and P obviously crosses, uh, and cor correlates and crosses with a lot of the NASDAQ 100 names as well. I like to kind of be informed where everything is. And you can see a notable uh, kind of disconnect. The, you know, the Russell this week was down. Okay. It was, it was a down week for the Russell. And again, why that's important. And, and again, it's not life changing. It's not super important that you're going to have to change your whole thinking into, into this week. But it is important to note that speculation money in smaller to mid cap names were down this week. Okay. People weren't chasing as much. There wasn't FOMO as much with non-beta names. We'll get to beta in a second. Uh, also the biotechs, right? 
Um, as, as much as every, you know, again, I'm not a big biotech guy, but I know what's going on. I mean, how, was, is there like 90,000 companies have released a PR since, since March about either a COVID, uh, COVID vaccine, a COVID test, right? Every single one of them. And again, Wall Street loves to pay for potential. Okay, I think uh, Tesla is the perfect, perfect example of that. But Wall Street also gets tired of listening to the same song and dance over and over again. It's kind of cool when like two companies are talking about this. But when you have Kodak, for example, that has gone from uh, making camera film to making blockchain, they're going to, and now into biotech, into COVID, right? It gets a little stale. And you can see how Wall Street has spoken. All these companies are coming out with PRs. Nobody cares anymore. They're really, really starting to sell off. Uh, not starting, the, the, the sell-off sell has been pretty pretty obvious here uh, since the high of July 20th. So those are the areas you have to kind of see, the market breadth. And ironically, despite how strong uh, the market was uh, this week, and, and when I mean when the market, I'm talking about the NASDAQ, uh, nearly a 3% move, uh, you definitely see breadth. And I read somewhere, I think it was yesterday, the day before, I read somewhere that Friday had a, a negative three to one decliners versus advances, which is obviously odd considering how much FOMO there is in beta. And I, you know, I tweeted this out on Friday and I said, look, I don't know, I don't care what the rest of the market does. Um, I'm in beta world right now. Beta is absolutely going absolutely nuts. There's ridiculous FOMO, okay? Um, not only is there ridiculous FOMO, people are, you know, making bets so aggressively out of the money that it's almost obscene. They almost expect to get there. So for example, Friday, you saw a move to Tesla to, you know, to uh, 20, 2100. And earlier this week, when the stock was like 1970, 1980, you saw 2,500 weeklies. So again, what does that tell you? It's it's incredibly aggressive area right now. Uh, beta is an incredibly individual tribe. Okay, they move. When one moves, they all move. And the one thing that I noticed uh, into the middle part of last week and Thursday, Friday were very, very aggressive sessions. Again, we'll talk about uh, the individual pivots, but this is a very copycat sort of uh, tribe. Okay, like for example, I'll give you a perfect example. For all you guys who, who love football, if you guys remember like 10 years ago, the Miami Dolphins started running the Wildcat. You guys remember that? Like out of nowhere, they started running the Wildcat. And then every, pretty much every single team that year started putting in their own version of the Wildcat. It's a very copycat. And in beta, if you notice, when one stock breaks out, it doesn't just go up a little bit. It's almost like one of those parabolic tsunamis that hit. So for example, when you look at an apple, right, and it broke out, right, apple just didn't go up a little bit. Apple really, really went. Uh, if you look in the video, and the video did a great job this week. The question was, uh, was the run-up warranted into earnings? NVIDIA had a phenomenal, phenomenal statement. Not only they negated uh, their earnings session that was sort of down, you know, four or five points. It went green on the day and took out 52-week highs. And you can see here where the breakout started. Well, excuse me, it's right here. Where the breakout started and where it is now, okay? So the one thing, and Zoom as well. Zoom has been a phenomenal trader. For all you guys have been trading Zoom, uh, this is pretty much a daily phenomenal. I mean, absolutely phenomenal trader has gone absolutely gone nuts. So the question is, what happens next? And I, I think if you do trade uh, big tech names, okay, uh, and you go through the list, and again, the list is not big, okay? You, 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 you can put the list on 10 fingers, okay? It's not big. You could figure out what's happening next. And if the market continues to be strong, and the word if is a very, very big deal, um, you might get the next round of monster moves. So for example, Zoom has gone nuts, right? Tesla's gone nuts. And remember, Tesla uh, has gone nuts and it started going nuts from this uh, 15, uh, call, call it the 1530 level, right? So it's gone really, really nuts. Um, NVIDIA has gone nuts. So we're looking for the next round. And the one thing that I'm, I'm gonna say right now, in this type of environment, when this, these things do confirm, there's a high probability that it's gonna happen. And the one thing that you're gonna to have to look for is deep out of the money option flow. And I wanna show you guys that in a few minutes. Uh, people who are starting to make bets way out of the money, 
very, very aggressive call buying. And those are the stocks you want to pay attention to because when they go, and if this is truly a copycat league, the next round of candidates could perform a Tesla, could pull a ZM, could, could you know, perform a, a NVIDIA, could pull an Apple. So it's very, very imp important to watch. Like right now, there is no value in Tesla. Tesla is going to split and we'll see how the stock trades. We'll swatch the liquidity for the first day or so. We'll watch the spread for the first day or so. We'll look, we'll have a really good idea of what happens with the average true range. Obviously the average true range is not gonna be $70 a day anymore. Uh, so it's very, very important to watch. The same thing with Apple um, when it does a split as well. But I think going into this week, you wanna pay attention to the next round. So let's talk about them, right? Look at Amazon, okay? so. Amazon has taken out, and this is, again, the ability to understand what could happen next. So Amazon had this really, really big aggressive range that started all the way back, and I say all the way back, uh, about a month ago, July the 21st. And it kept on hitting this 3250, right? 3250, 3250, 3250, 3250. It finally broke out, okay? So now it's just kind of sitting here and playing possum. What I think is going to happen, and again, the, the one thing before I even say this, um, I, I want everybody to understand very, very something very important. Okay, when we talk about something can happen, okay, we're not making bets ahead of that event happening. Okay, we are not guessing that it's going to happen. We're not trying to anticipate it's happening. We have to wait for it to happen because if you don't wait for it to happen, especially for all you guys who are trading in the options market, you know that if you anticipate a move because you're fighting time, your premium goes to death, okay? So it's very, very important before we even go on any further to understand that these stocks need to confirm, okay? And if they do confirm, there's a high probability if this market continues, they could pull a Tesla, NVIDIA, uh, Apple, uh, or Zoom, okay? So I wanna kinda make that clear. So don't anticipate. We're gonna patiently wait for these things to confirm, but it's very, very important to understand the capabilities, what possibly could happen. And I'll show you kind of the option flow, what I, what I mean for that in a second. So uh, Amazon, I definitely wanna watch, if not for Monday, obviously this week. Uh, first, the sneaky area here, and once it takes out this 52-week highs, again, we started seeing for the last week, couple of weeks, 3,300, 3,400, 3,500, 3,600, 3,700 calls. We saw September 4,000 calls uh, being traded, I believe, on Friday. So this is definitely a candidate that can go nuts. Netflix, crazy call volume coming in on this thing for the last three, four days. Really ridiculous option flow. Although, again, I'm not waiting for a trade to start out here, okay? Around here, you want to start making some sales. We want to start watching this whole channel here, okay? Because again, if Netflix does wake up, and you can see here, if you draw this kind of like imaginary line, if it starts breaking down this trend line here, this does a lot of room, right? Really a lot of room, and you can see your measure potential all the way to the 530s. And just because it hasn't run yet, makes it very, very attractive to kind of wake up. And again, you want to look at the laggards. You want to look at the names that have been formed aggressive runners obviously pay attention to the out of the money aggressive option flow and when it confirms that's when you potentially could have that next wave of really really aggressive buying Alibaba great trader on Friday caught this thing very very well you could see it again you don't need to be uh, a professional advanced analytic uh, human being to figure out this damn thing looks good right Ridiculous call buying came in, coming in for the last several weeks. They reported their numbers, they embraced their numbers, they negated their bad numbers, and they took the stock, stock higher. And now we're literally a stone throws away from its potential to start making a really aggressive run. Again, the reason why I'm using the word aggressive because now we have a track record of beta names putting these aggressive moves. So it's not like anymore you're saying to yourself, well, if Alibaba breaks out, maybe you could get a $2 move. Now, because of Tesla, because of NVIDIA, because of Apple, because of Zoom and everything else, now you're saying to yourself, well, can this thing go to 300, right? Is it possible? Okay. Same thing with Facebook. Again, we're seeing, we've been seeing really aggressive call buying. And again, I've started mentioning it, if you've been watching this broadcast uh, just all this week, this really unusual call buying coming in, the 290s, the 300s, the 325s, based on what? Like, what is the deal? Are they buying TikTok? Like, what is the deal? Are they spinning off Instagram? Like, what is the speculation money? Again, it's called speculation money for a reason. But again, it's something that we really need to pay attention to. So it's very, very important to kind of get these stocks right in front of us. You know, 
Forget about the Tesla's huge run. Forget about the Zooms, huge run. The video, huge runs. Can they get pulled and there's value to these things to the downside? I'm always conscious. Again, I don't trade with rose colored glasses expecting a one way ticket to stairways of heaven. I'm always conscious. Every single day I always say, hey, let's keep an eye on these things. Have big rig runs. We don't want to get caught with our uh, pants. Uh, blow our ankles. Let's stay very, very conscious. We get that part, but we're just kind of making notes for the stocks that potentially could go on big runs. A stock like Adobe as well, right? You saw a really, really aggressive call buying come in. Again, let's watch this channel, right? The only reason it stopped a couple of days ago was this linear regression line. If this linear regression line gets confirmed, it's going to go. So again, it's an incredible market right now. We're seeing ridiculous crazy parabolic moves in cult names, okay? Uh, the economy now is actually being fueled with good earnings, which is an absolute important part of any type of quote-unquote bubble, right? People talk about bubbles all the time, but if there is financial ramifications, right? If there's a financial reason the market can continue, all of a sudden, well, that bubble may not be a bubble anymore. Um, so it's very, very important. So we have the setups for the week. Uh, we have the names that we really believe can be the next quote unquote, parabolic movers. And now the key is be an adult and wait for these things to confirm. Because if you don't, and I promise you, if you're getting long the $3,500 calls on Amazon and the stock is you know $3,275 and gets, keeps on getting rejected off supply, you're gonna lose a lot of money. You're gonna lose a lot of money quick. Again, it's not hope, it's not prayer, okay? We need confirmation. So again, we have our course of action, we have our opinion, and now we're patiently waiting for all these things uh, to confirm. Uh, so that's where I kind of am uh, this week. Uh, I am kind of conscious of a lot of names that didn't rally this week. Again, uh, if you've been watching this book broadcast, I've been putting in pivots to Boeing uh, to the downside all week. I mean, Boeing just cannot rally. No matter what happens, uh, Boeing is, is just, can't rally, okay? Uh, a lot of names are starting to get very, very tired, but again, we wanna omit those names. Again, you don't wanna fight with stocks for 40, 50 cents to the downside when there's moves, potential moves in tens of dollars to the upside in one interval. So it's very, very important to kind of get our ducks in a row. Uh, very, very good week. Uh, Friday was aggressive again. Um, I, I think this week, again, specific names I'm definitely watching. Um, come Monday, again, very, very important, guys. And I know for a lot of you new traders are still in the honeymoon phase of trading. Isn't Monday yet? Oh, it's so romantic. That's great. By 9.35, you want to kill yourself. I get it. I was there, too. What we want to do come Monday, stay very, very patient. We have our game plan. We have our opinion. We want to see everything play out perfectly, especially in the first 30 minutes. Let the first candle uh, play out. We want to make sure that everything is uh, lining up perfectly to our scenario. So let's talk about this. Um, some names, you know, did very, very well. Some names kind of stalled out. But again, it's, 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 it's very important to understand that every single trade that you put on, yeah, everybody wants that 300 point move on Tesla, but those 50 cents dollar, dollar and a half, two dollar moves, they're pretty good as well. That's how you really, really build your career. Um, and again, you don't want to romanticize the stock. It's only a piece of paper. Use it for what it is. It's a vehicle to put your account very, very healthy without making uh, the amateur mistakes of falling in love with a company or a stock symbol. Very, very important. So uh, Microsoft, let's talk about the pivots. Uh, Microsoft 215 needs to build. Uh, here is Microsoft, right? It took out the previous day's high of 215. Uh, went to 216 and a quarter and then reversed. But again, my, and the funny thing is I, I'm starting to pay attention more to Microsoft. This isn't the old Microsoft that's going to trade in the 30, 40 cent range. I started watching this thing really in the last couple of weeks. It's been a pretty good trader. So I'm going to start putting this thing on my regular rotation. Uh, it's actually trading very, very well. Um, I like the average true range in this thing. And it took a lot of time for that average true range to really expand. So it's something really, really cool uh, going forward. Uh, shop 1044 needs to build. Um, let's see. Shop. I wasn't watching shop at all. Um, 1044, uh, looks like it traded at 1047 and then reverse. It doesn't look like there was a second entry in this thing. Yeah, so yeah, you need a second entry. So definitely was no second entry. It took out that level. That's why, again, guys, very, very important. Always look for second entries. That's kind of the staple point behind the whole PS60 theory. Um, yeah, this was my, uh, this was my uh, first trade of the day. Uh, where was it? Where was it? Uh, FSLY of all things. This was actually my first trade today. We'll get to these other pivots in a second. Uh, FSLY has been a pretty good mover. Um, pretty good move here. Um, so 
90 bucks was the pivot. It was actually yesterday's high of 89.38, but I always like to enter at the whole numbers. Gave a really good $2 move really quick. Uh, very, very nice. Like here's the whole pivot right over here and it stopped perfectly on supply. Uh, my last sale was at 92, literally uh, 19 cents away from the high of the day. So I was pretty, pretty happy with the trade, um, considering I'm not really you know, trading this thing. Facebook, we scalped, uh, wasn't a big move. And I was very, very surprised. Um, so we got long Facebook, right? I got long Facebook right over here on this 270 break. It only went up 50 cents. That's it. Only went up 50 cents. And again, guys, the one thing that's very, very important to understand don't overthink where a stock's going to go. It should have went to 72 in the upper Bollinger Band, but sometimes a stock is going to stall. So if we get a pivot and it confirms, right, we know we're going to get cash flow. The question is, is the cash flow going to be 50 cents? Is the cash flow going to be $55? We don't know, okay? Especially if you're new traders, continue to take money on the way up and use break even on the way down. You could always re-enter into strength or a 60 minute rising support. So it's very, very important. Again, don't fall in love with these stocks. They're only pieces of paper. Um, I still like NET, didn't come close. Beyond, I still like, didn't come close. Roku, I still like, didn't come close. Apple, again, beast, absolute beast. Uh, 477.50 uh, needs to build. And Apple, again, and that, that whole parabolic, just euphoria. So whole, just it, it took out this whole area here, 477.50. And the stock basically went to 500 bucks. Just an amazing, amazing move by Apple. Um, it probably has one more day, maybe a blow off top in this upper Bollinger Band here, but it looks incredibly strong, really, really strong name. Um, ZM never got up to the 495 level. This was a really good trade. Chewy never got up to 58. Uh, Square, again, only a dollar move. I caught, I, I actually missed the move on Friday on the 52 week high. Okay. Um, but I caught it the previous day, okay? The previous day on Thursday, which was really, really good. Uh, 158.50 needs to build. Only gave a dollar move, which was I was very, very surprised. So it took out the 52 week high. And again, it only gave a dollar move, which is very, very odd. And that's why I'm, I'm saying this week, and I always say this again, always remember stocks do get tired as well. So you want to make sure when you are trading, especially at these levels, really, really highs, you want to make sure that if the stock doesn't confirm the proper way, again, you have to take money on the way up. That's your, that's your job as a trader. Use break even as you stop. And if, again, if you get faked out and it continues to go higher, again, you could either buy it back uh, at different levels, either into strength or into rising 60 minute support, or if you could just, just leave the trade alone, that's fine as well. But again, don't fall in love. It's very, very important to understand that, but it's very, very odd that it failed. Uh, Baba was amazing. It was an absolutely amazing trade. Um, I got long this thing twice. Very, very strong. I was actually surprised that it didn't take out 52 week highs on Friday, but this is what really started it off. 261.50 rejected twice, needs to build, and Baba went nuts. I mean, really, really good move here. So here's the 261.50. You can see these two points of reference on the daily chart. So uh, 261.42 is the high here, 261.29 is the high here. You get it, 261.50 and it exploded, went right to 267.50. And again, this whole macro picture is right in front of us for, for Monday. So we wanna make sure we wanna pay attention. But Baba was a great trader on Friday. Uh, again, Apple going nuts. And again, this NVIDIA just doesn't stop. Look, look at these moves on the video. 495.50, 4.96 needs to confirm. The video went absolutely bananas as well. So here is the 495.50, right? This whole channel here, 495.50, 4.96, and went to 512, just huge, just absolutely huge move. So beta is just ridiculous. Okay, again, you, ha you can't trade all of them like this. You have to trade the ones that are really confirmed, especially macro channels and heavy option flow. And I'll show you that in one second. And again, like I said, $500 weekly calls coming in, going nuts. Uh, Alibaba, perfect. Microsoft, again, 216 on deck. Uh, good move there. Uh, big level coming up. Yeah, I mean, I, I scalped Facebook. Um, I scalped Facebook only went to 270 and a half. I was very, very surprised. The previous day was very good. But again, there's so much call buying this thing. I continue uh, to watch this thing. So you had these massive moves in Amazon, in the video. Um, Amazon, the video, Apple, right? Alibaba. So really, really big action. It wasn't like the whole group went, but the ones that confirmed went really, really well. Uh, so that, you know, just an insane move. Absolutely insane move. Um, so here's kind of what I want to talk about, right? So if you notice, look at the call buying for all you guys who are going to ask me, this is flow algo. This is what I use for my option, uh, option scanner. If you look at the call buying that is coming in, right? Look at the names, right? Look at, look at the money flow on these names. And these are the names we talked about, right? Look at Netflix and Netflix, by the way, not only had, 
uh, an order coming in, one buyer coming in for 23 and a half million premium. The previous day, it also had for like 25 million. Look at the call buying continues in, 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 uh, in, in uh, Apple. Look at Alibaba. Remember we're talking about it's, it's right on the edge of breaking out. So look at the call. You, you have $34 million worth of premium hit just for Friday of deep out of the money calls. Again, that's when everything lines up, okay? Look at CRM, like $22 million into weakness. And again, you can just go through the list, Amazon, so forth and so on. So my plan going into uh, this week uh, is definitely keeping an eye on the names that haven't broken out yet, whether they're macro channels, uh, or intermediate channels. I think that's where the value is. I definitely want to keep one eye open, make sure we don't get pulled, okay? Because again, you have to trade responsibly, not with the rose-colored glasses. Uh, for all you guys who are joining us in the live webinar this week, please get to uh, Morning Strategy at 9 a.m. And for all you guys who are trading us on the Twitter feed, you're, you, know, you will be obviously uh, helped out at the beginning of the trading day as well with the early feeds. Guys, God bless. I wish everybody nothing but happiness and health. And with God's help, I'll see you all in the field tomorrow. Take care. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.